Shea Bear 1000 here. Today, let's find out what's wrong with this Boland's 25cc weed eater. I bought it for 10 bucks. Let's see what's wrong with it. Okay guys, this is what we're looking at here. Like I said, this is the one that I gave $10 for at the estate sale. And like Monkey said the other day, it looks like it hasn't been run that long ago. Uh, it is dirty. Um, that looks like, let me see if I can show you this. Yeah, that looks like the Pac-Man. See how those look like a Pac-Man? Uh, the adjustment screw, so that's good. It does have adjusting screws. I've got some gas out here. I've already pulled it a couple times. It does have compression. So let's go ahead and put some gas in here. And let's see if this will start up and run. Uh, looks like one of the lines right here. The return line. Okay, so we're not going to put any gas in it just yet. Okay. So... This line is nice and, and uh, limber, uh, so we're going to have to put a, a line on there. Let me go get a piece of fuel line, and I'm going to put that fuel line on there. That's the return, so let's see. Okay, all right, so let's see. That may have been the issue all along. We're going to, uh, let me get a piece of fuel line, put it on there, and then we'll go from there. Okay, guys, I got that line replaced. It only took, you know, just a minute or so. Uh, we're going to put some gas in here. Funnel wiped out. Like I said, the other fuel line is pretty limber yet, so I think it'll be alright. That could be the reason why they quit running it. But just in case, I did bring my Pac-Man adjusting tool out. Pac-Man, alright. Let's go ahead. I got a little bit of gas in here. It may be enough. Fuel. It's pre-mixed fuel. Yeah, it's about a half a tank. It should be enough to do what we're going to do. Alright. Now, let's get our cap on here. Alright. It's pumped up. There was a little bit of fuel in this primer bulb, so. Okay, it seems like it's working pretty good. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do is, that's pretty nasty down in there. I'm going to spray that off with some carb cleaner. Let's check the filter, too. Filter don't look bad. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this off with some carb cleaner and uh, get this dirt off of here. Now you've seen me do it, uh, do that before with it running, like on that uh, on the chipper. But as you've seen, that carburetor was very clean. I wouldn't do it on this because all this little stuff can be sucked back in there. So let me get all this cleaned off, and then we'll try to start it up and see what happens. Okay, guys. Hopefully you can see that. So, there. Got it all cleaned off real good, and I blew it all off with compressed air. It says to pump, press the primer bulb ten times. Move lever to one, okay? Now, I'm not going to press that primer bulb anymore. Because we, you know, well, a couple of times, whatever. Because we all, we've already done that to check and see if it was getting fuel, and it is. Okay, so squeeze throttle. Okay, squeeze throttle. Steps four through eight. Okay, so we're going to squeeze, pull the throttle all the way open. Well, you know, I've done this a million times, but, you know, for anybody that doesn't really know for sure. Pull it five times. Move the lever. 
at your choke to two pull three to five times to start engine then wait 30 seconds and then move lever to three that'll be wide open choke so let's go ahead I'm gonna back you out here a little bit and let's see if this thing will start can you see all right okay now this has a switch on it but it's just a one-way switch you just hold it until it shuts off now it looks like I've got a fuel cap leaking right there I'm not real concerned about that because I think I got a fuel cap that could be an issue because uh, sometimes they need pressure because remember these don't have fuel pumps and the fuel is down below the carburetor so that might give us an issue I don't know but let's try to start it first and see what happens well that was pretty good let's move it to two okay sounds like we may need to adjust the carburetor so luckily I've already brought out my Pac-Man adjusting tools let's go ahead and we're just going to start from the beginning I'm going to turn them all the way in I'm going to turn them out one turn there's a half there's one I'm going to do the same thing with this one and we'll just adjust it that way we know it's right okay so there's a half there's one let's go from there take it out a little bit more on that one See if it'll cut. Alright, not quite ready yet. Let me fiddle with this. Now it's not one to idle, but let me fiddle around with this a little bit more and see if I got another cap, and then we'll try to uh, try to cut something with it. All right, guys. I think I've got it adjusted about right. Um, now, when I, I should mention this, okay? When 
when you know I cut and say well I'm gonna you know tweak it a little bit more or fiddle with it a little bit more that's because I'm doing this I, I do my first adjusting just to get it to, to run to, so I can get it warm because remember you want it adjusted to how it's going to be running all the time not for only when it's cold so that's why I do that I let it get warmed up and then I do my final adjusting and then sometimes the next day or wait a couple hours till it's cool and then try to start it sometimes you may have to adjust a little bit more if it doesn't want to start right for you so I should mention that in all my videos I haven't I'm sorry that's my fault but let's see if this thing will cut okay now, can you guys see over there we got some some weeds right over in there so let's Let's go chit chat for a minute. Okay guys, so well as you can see <laughs> my work table is a mess again, so I gotta get that cleaned off for our next project, which will be the next video. We're going to be uh cleaning up the noodle maker uh to make homemade noodles. We're gonna make some homemade noodles tonight. Uh that'll be in with that. So, you know, we'll be it's not really restoring it because I'm not gonna be doing any chrome plating or nickel plating. We're just going to take it apart, clean it the best we can, and uh, then we'll try it out and see how it works. Um, but, yeah, like I said, remember, when I say that, when I say, you know, let me let me fiddle with this more, that's because it's getting warmed up. And that's when, remember, that's when you want to do your final adjusting. Something like that, as you can tell, it didn't want to run long enough to, uh, to get it warm. So I had to adjust it cold get it to run long enough to warm it up so that way it could uh it can um run long enough to get it adjusted in just right now then bolins is uh you know weed eaters are weed eaters they're all pretty much the same the lines the few lines may be a little different whatnot they all act and run pretty much the same um the ones that don't have the adjustments on them i hate them i hate them but Boland's normally does. Um, I'm going to clean that all up nice and neat and pretty. And uh, um, that'll be for sale. I should probably keep that one. But I got I got another one, an old Weed Eater. The actual Weed Eater brand, which I believe Poland is made by Weed Eater. But I've, I've got, I've got uh, like four of them out there. One of them is mine. The other three is just stuff that, you know, Gary and I... You know, Gary has dropped off for us to fix up. I did get a chainsaw running. I sold it yesterday, so I need to get a hold of him, have him come get his share of the money. Um, it was just a small polling, um, so we only, uh, I ended up getting 35 out of it. Kind of wanted to get 40, but 35 is fair because it's one of the ones you can buy brand new on sale, you know, especially coming up. You know, when they're when when spring's coming up, they're they're gonna put these chainsaws on sale, and you can get them for you know ninety nine bucks, a hundred bucks. Um, so I thought thirty five dollars was fair. You know, if I can if I can double my money on something, I'll be happy. Like uh, I'd like to get thirty out of that because it's a Bowens, it's a name brand, uh, and it's a good name brand. Uh, I'd like to get 30 out of it. I may put 35 on it and come down to 30. 
but I definitely want at least 25 for it because that's what it's worth. Now I'm doubling my money. If I double my money on something, I'm good with that for for now because if you try to get rich off of one item, you know, you want to try to triple your money, quadruple your money on a damn weed eater that you gave ten dollars for, you're gonna be holding it for a long time. It's gonna be sitting. You're gonna be dragging around. You're gonna be trying to sell it for a long time. And then when you do get the money it out of it that you want, if you do, um, you know, then it's like, you know, why? Why? If you can double your money, especially pretty much overnight, you know, we got that, what, Sunday? No, we got that Saturday. And I didn't have it up for sale. This is Monday. I didn't have it up for sale yesterday, of course, because I didn't have it running. I didn't check it out. We, you know... So Monk would be glad to hear that. I think she's learning something because she said, "Well, look, you know that that you know like uh, you saw the like the the dirt and stuff, how it gets greasy and oily. Um, that's because uh, like when it's real dried up, it hasn't been run a while. But if you can take your finger and it's still kind of moist and and a little wet, I would say that thing it's only been sent in a couple months." Uh, Anything longer than that, then the, the dust from the garage that it was in or whatever will start collecting on top of that, and it'll look real dry. That was kind of moist, so it looked like it hadn't been run that long ago. I would say the uh, the the fuel line, you know, broke, which I didn't notice it at first, but I would say they started priming it, seeing, you know, stuff squirting out, gas squirting out of it, seen the broken line and whatnot, and said, well, I can't fix that. Like I said before, there's nothing wrong with it if you can't fix your own, own stuff, uh, your own equipment. A lot of people, they think differently. They think if you're going to have that kind of equipment, you should know how to work on it. That's like saying if you're going to own a car, you should know how to work on it. It's not the case, you know. And there's nothing wrong with, with uh, being able to operate and use your stuff. But, you know, when it comes to fine-tuning and changing fuel lines, some people just can't do it. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's why we have guys like me. Um... Like that fix right there, if I was doing that for a customer, I'd charge them 10 bucks. That'd be it. Because it, it was, what, what did it take me, 20, all of 20 minutes or something? Yeah, I'd charge them maybe 10 bucks, you know. For somebody I knew, 5 bucks. But uh, a total stranger, I'd charge them 10 bucks to do what I just did. Um, a lot of guys, you know, you, you take it to a weed eater shop, a mower shop or something, you know. They got a minimum. They'll charge you like 70, 75 bucks an hour. At least okay and you got a minimum of a half an hour which would be half of that you know you're putting 35 40 dollars in to a 30 dollar weed eater you know um, yeah if I wanted to sit on it I could have I could triple my money but I don't want I really don't want to do that because I want to sell good quality stuff at a fair price and get a fair price for it. you know that way it pays me for my time and whatever I may have in it. Now that little fuel line I put on there was maybe three and a half inches long. I had it from something else I cut off. So that's why I buy a lot of fuel line, you know. Because if you go buy a foot every time you need some, you know, then you got to start charging more. And I'm not that way. I, I just want to, you know, I want to be fair with everybody. But I, I expect, you know, to be fair back, you know. It's like that. My my chainsaw that I sold the other day you know I had 60 bucks on it because I wanted 50 for it it's well worth 50 craftsman with the case with the tool with an extra spark plug pull it one time fire it right up this old guy come over and asked me what I wanted for it I said 60 bucks he's really interested he looked it over and everything and Says it runs good, huh? I said, yeah, I fired it up. He revved it up, revved it up, revved it up, revved it up. I said, look, dude, shut it off, you know. I don't know if you're trying to cause something to happen so you can get it cheaper or what, but you're not going to sit here and blow up my fucking chainsaw, you know. He goes, oh, okay, 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 I understand. I said, you know, you're just sitting there dead revving it, you know. You can't you can't do that. I mean, when you're cutting, you're, you're they're made to run wide open, yes. But there's there's some drag on it, you know. And, you know, when you're cutting through wood and stuff, you're not just sitting there holding it wide open. I said, look, dude, you're not blowing up my fucking chainsaw, you know. Put the fucking thing down. 
Well, I'm interested in it. I don't give a fuck. You heard it run. You know it runs. Well, how's it cut? Buy the fucker, take it home, you'll find out how it cuts. You guys seen how it cut. Cut through that oak just like butter. I said, now look, you can look at the, you can look at the chain. You can see how sharp it is if you know anything about these things. Yeah, yeah, it's, it looks sharp. Well, okay, because see, I sharpen. You guys don't see it because I've showed you that before. I can show you again in an upcoming video on one of these other ones. I'll, I'll refresh you on it. But uh, what I do is when I'm done using it, okay, I'll tr I try to run my fuel out all right, if I can. So when I run a fuel out, I'm done for the day. I go ahead and sharpen the chain. That way it's good to go. That way you guys see how it cuts. Um, it's good to go next time I go to use it. I don't, you know, get it all ready and go to cut something and it's dull and then you got to stop and then you got to sharpen it. I sharpen it before I put it away. That way next time I use it, I fill it up with gas, boom, it's ready to rock and roll. But so he was like, 60, huh? 60, yes, with the case and everything, you know. I can't do that. I said, well, I'll wiggle with you. What can you do? I can do 40 bucks. I said, dude, you're starting to piss me off now. I said, that's fucking bullshit. You know, I said, if that was a Poland, I'd sell it for 40 bucks. I'm not, you know, this is a craftsman with the case, with the plug, blah, 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 the tool. You heard it run, it runs flawlessly. He was like, well, I don't know, 40 bucks. I said, look, I'll drop down to 50 for you and that's it. I ain't budging. I ain't budging no more. Don't even fuck talk to me. At this time, another guy I've, I've seen several times talk to an older guy. He used to be an auctioneer up north in uh, up in Tennessee or Kentucky somewhere. He come over and he goes, 50 bucks, huh? I said, yeah, 50 bucks. We act like we didn't know each other because I picked up on him right away because he you know, gave me that wink when he come walking up. And uh, he said, hmm. He said, well, if this yahoo here don't give you 50 bucks for it, I'll give you 50 bucks for it. Which he, he had no intentions on buying it. I knew that. He knew that. That guy didn't know that. The guy said, all right, box it up. I'll give you 50 for it since, since I can see you're, you're stuck on it and you're not going to come down. I said, look, you box the fucker up. Because <laughs> this guy right here will buy it for 50 bucks. You know, if you don't want it, I'm going to eat just as good tonight as if I sold it, you know. He was like, all right. Gave me a $50 bill and walked off with it. But, you know, sometimes you just got to stand firm and don't take the shit. Customer's always right to a certain point. This time he was not right. You know, he's trying to cause something to go wrong. And, oh, yeah, and then it, he was like, well, it sounds like it's missing a little bit. I said, well, no, it's it's not missing. You know, it's it's a single cylinder. If if it was missing, it would be cutting out, you know, like you're flipping a switch on and off. It's a single cylinder. It don't have other cylinders to keep it going. I said, it's not missing. There's nothing wrong with it. You're trying to pick it apart, and you can't find a damn thing to pick apart on. You know, you're just trying to fucking screw me, and I'm not getting screwed by you or anybody else, you know. So, I'm stuck stuck to it, but that was cool, that guy come over. He was like, you knew I wasn't going to buy that, didn't you? I said, yeah, I knew you wasn't going to buy it, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yeah, I was going to offer him five bucks. I said, here, let me give you a couple bucks for it. He said, no, nah, you don't owe me nothing. He said, I hate dickheads like that, too. That's when he told me I used to, you know, run an auction house. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> He said, I know how assholes like that play. You know, they just want something for nothing. Yeah, he pulls up in one of those uh, Cadillacs. It wasn't, it was the Cadillac pickup truck. You know, brand new, fucking flawless. Not a scratch on it, looking all pretty and shiny. You know, when he whipped out a $50 bill, he had hundreds, fifties, twenties. You know, he's digging through for a $50 bill. Well, you, you know, that's why he got so much money, because he tries to screw whoever he can. Well, he wasn't screwing old Shea Bear, you know. But anyway, I got off on a rant there. But, uh, so that was funny. So I am, I think I'll put 30 bucks on that, and I'll come down to 25. Uh, it, it's well worth it. I sold another Bolins. It was bigger than that one, though. But, um, I got 25 out of it. Uh... So I figure that one, it's in good shape. I'll clean it up nice and neat, and 
it'll look good, it'll run good, and somebody's getting a good deal. Like I said, don't don't try to get rich off on one item. You get one big item, get rich off of it. Let you know, like my chipper. You know, I had 175 on it. I would drop to 50 because it would kind of rev up and down. And when I got to shooting some uh, carburetor cleaner around it, it would rev up a little bit. So I knew it was it's sucking air somewhere. So it may be a gasket or something sucking air. I'm gonna fix that and I'll put two on it and I'll come down to 75. You know, I mean, that thing. Where was it? 4.99 in one place. That's over 500 bucks. It was 7.99. You the 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 top prices they're getting for them seven ninety nine between seven fifty and seven ninety nine. We did find one I think what I say, or maybe four hundred fifty bucks, but that was on sale. You know, I think on my video I put it across the screen. Tractor Supply, that was on sale and it wasn't quite the same, the same unit as that one. It was a little different. It was the same brand, but it was a little different. But that exact same brand. Uh, with the five horsepower three oh and it was only uh two or two and a half inch um what what that means is you can put uh up to two or two and a half inch diameter uh sticks down into it limbs down into it that's a three inch so that makes a big difference it really does i mean you know and and it'll chew them up you guys saw that it'll chew it up um but it does run. It'll it'll start up first crank every time. It just you know when it's running wide open, it's, you know it's running fine. But if you want to run it like half throttle or idle, it'll kind of bog down and then rev back up, bog down, rev back up, it's sucking air somewhere. But uh, I wouldn't be afraid to sell it like that for 175. I'll take 150 for it. You know, a lot of guys they'd be putting four or five hundred dollars on it. Because if it's one thing I can't stand, it's somebody coming up to me. Well, I can I can buy I can buy a brand new one for that money. Well, then once you once you go buy a brand new one, then and you know they're full of shit. Uh, one guy said, "What was I selling? I was selling something." He said, uh, "Oh, that weed eater, monkey's weed eater, the electric one, the uh, Black and Decker." Yeah, he said, "We got on weed eater." I said, ten bucks." I can buy them new all day long for that. I said, I'll tell you what, bring it up on your phone right now and show me where you can buy it new for 10 bucks and I'll give you the fucking thing. Nah, nah, it's not worth my time. I said, well, you ain't worth my time. Get the fuck away from my booth. Well, I was interested in some of your knives. Yeah, you're interested in some of my knives if I give them to you. No, I don't even want to deal with people like you. Just go, go, you know. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, a store. I'm not Walmart. I, you know, I'm not Tractor Supply. I'm not Rural King. You know, you piss me off, get the fuck away. I don't even want to deal with you, you know? But it only happens about once a week you get somebody like that. Some cocky fucker just, you know, I can buy a new... Yeah, you can buy a Black & Decker weed eater with the extendable boom on it, you know, the pole. So you can make it shorter or longer to, to fit fit you better. For ten bucks, brand new all day long. You show it to me, bring it up on your phone. It's got to be brand new, though. You said brand new. Bring it up brand new. Show me. And I'll give you this one. Yeah, put your money where your mouth is, dude. You know? Just get the fuck away. I ain't got time for that kind of shit. I got other people looking at my stuff that are buying stuff, you know? Just get out of my face, you know? You know? Because I know what he was wanting. He was wanting it for like a dollar. Fuck that. I mean, I know everybody wants gas. And I know the electric ones don't sell that good. But if it ain't worth ten bucks... You know, she's had the thing five years or whatever. I'll keep it another year. I don't care. You know, I mean, ten bucks for a weed eater. You know, what the hell? You know, if somebody can't afford a gas one and don't want to worry about mixing and all that shit, they got a small yard, they'll give me ten bucks for it, you know. It's like that electric blower. I sold it for five, you know. Because, well, for five, because it was given to me. I'd done nothing to it. But it, it was dirty. It looked you know, bad. It was well worn, but it worked fine. The guy said five bucks. Shit, here you go. You know, he knew. He knew I probably could have got fifteen out of that. But I, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to get rich off of people. You know, but I, you know, I got bills to pay too. You know, I got a dog to feed. And <laughs> but anyway, guys, I want to say thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I'm going to get that cleaned up, get it ready to go, because I may set, may or may not set up tomorrow. If I don't go down the industry street and set up, 
I may set up here in the driveway. I got to get monkey's blower out. Oh, I can also use that chipper as a blower too to shoot. I can run it down through the driveway in the air. Coming out of it will blow that stuff off. But anyway, get the driveway blown off real good. And uh, but stay tuned for the next video. It is going to be the noodle maker. It's an Imperia, not Imperial. It's from France. I'll get back with you on that. <laughs> I'll leave it across the screen. But that'll be the next video, and then we'll make some noodles for Monkey tonight. So, alright, guys, thanks for watching again. I appreciate it. Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Stay tuned for a video on this clock coming up soon. Because I got a surprise about that. Okay? Bye bye, guys. Take care. Extra head. Cleaned up. Looking good.